This video demonstrates the equipment that you're going to use in the acceleration on an incline experiment. Now, generally speaking, you're given two weeks to do this experiment because it's the first experiment that you do in the semester. So what will happen is your lab instructor will teach you some skills for in the lab room, such as estimating uncertainties and writing things down in your lab book. And then you'll start the experiment and you'll apply those skills so that you can learn them well. The next week, again, your lab instructor will teach you some skills, such as using Excel or doing calculations, and you finish the experiment, and again, you apply those skills that you just learned. So that's why you're usually given two weeks to do this experiment. You're going to be learning some skills and then applying them in the lab. Now, the equipment that we use, the most important part is this air track. So it's got little holes in the top of it. The glider sits on this surface. There's a blower unit over here that is going to blow air in, and then the air leaks out of these holes here, and it allows the glider to slide back and forth almost friction-free on the track. The switch to turn the blower unit on is here, and it's a little bit loud, but I'm going to demonstrate right now how it works. So you turn the blower on. And as you can see, the glider moves almost friction-free when the air is blowing through the track. Now what we do in this experiment is we're going to actually tilt the track, and we'll start the glider from rest at this end of the track, release it, and it'll slide just due to gravity down the track, and it'll pass through this photo gate at the end of its motion. The point of doing all this is you're going to take several different measurements of quantities on the track, and then you're going to calculate the acceleration that the glider is experiencing in three different ways and see whether those three values agree well with each other. So before I tell you about the quantities that you're going to measure, first let me explain what a photo gate is. So a photo gate has a little LED on one side that is emitting an infrared beam, so non-visible light, and then there's a detector on the other side. So when the beam is blocked, a computer can detect that fact. So on the top of this, there's a little red light that comes on when I block the beam. We're going to put the photo gate down here at the end of the glider's motion, and there's a little card on the top of the glider, and if you've got this height of the photo gate set correctly, then when the glider goes by it, it's going to trigger the photo gate. We're going to use that to figure out what the final velocity of the glider is. Now there are three quantities that you're going to be measuring. So one of them is d, which is the distance that the glider travels from its initial position to when it's centered in the photo gate. The second thing you want to measure is the time it takes the glider to go that far, and you'll measure that by hand using a stopwatch. And the third thing you need is the final velocity of the glider when it passes through the photo gate. That's a calculated value. I'm going to show you how to get that later. Now let me just give you an overview about how you'll be taking data. Is There is a computer program, which I'm going to show you later in a separate screencast, which is going to record how long the photo gate beam is blocked for. So it's going to measure the time that the card blocks the photo gate beam for. So that gives us a time, but what we actually want down here is the final velocity. How do we get that? Well, we're just going to measure the width of the card, and then distance divided by time gives us velocity. So that's how we're going to get our final velocity. To get our distance d, something you won't be able to see, this little yellow stripe here is actually a ruler. It's in millimeters. So you're going to need to measure this, and the way in which you do that is you use one edge of your glider as a pointer, pointing onto this scale. So you would use, say, this edge of the glider and just write down the value here. You're going to need, however, an uncertainty on that, and because the glider starts out stationary, you're safe to just use reading uncertainty. So this is basically a pointer on a scale, so you'd use one quarter of the smallest division, so a quarter of a millimeter, as your reading uncertainty on this measurement. This is just a position, though. What we actually want is distance, the whole distance that it traveled. So we get this initial position just by reading it. And then you move your glider down here, you center it in the photo gate, and then you use that same edge as a pointer to read off its final position down here. Now, that position is going to have a larger uncertainty. It'll still have reading uncertainty, so it's still got that quarter millimeter due to reading the ruler, but you also want to add some physical uncertainty to it. The reason being is that when the glider gets down here, it's in motion and you have to stop the stopwatch when you think the card is exactly centered in the photo gate. 
you may be off by a little bit when you do that. It could be as much as a centimeter, for example. You decide how far off you're likely to be, and then whatever that range is, use half of that as your physical uncertainty. So plus or minus half of the range that you think you might be off by. So when the glider is over here, you get a position with reading uncertainty. And when the glider is centered in the photo gate, you get another position with reading uncertainty and some physical uncertainty. And then to get your distance d, all you do is subtract the initial position off of the final position. So 1 minus the other gives you d, the distance that the glider traveled. Now you're using your stopwatch to time how long it takes the glider to go from here to here. And of course, your uncertainty on that should be human reaction time, which is about 0.15 seconds. We neglect instrument uncertainty in this case, even though it's a digital scale, simply because human reaction time is so much bigger. Now, it may occur to you that we're probably not going to get the most accurate values uh, taking data this way, because the chances of you stopping the stopwatch exactly when the card is centered in the photo gate is kind of low. So that means that our values are likely to be pretty inaccurate. So what could we do to make it more accurate? Well, what we're going to do is we're not going to do this experiment only one time. We're actually going to do it 20 times, 2, 0, 20 times. And we're going to average all those values together in order to get a more accurate final value. So the distance d won't change from run to run. You only need to measure it once. However, you're going to have 20 values off of the stopwatch. You're also going to be getting 20 values off of the computer program that I'm going to show you later. So you'll, be take, you'll get uh, 20 TD values and 20 TF, F for flag, values. And you'll be averaging all the TD values and all of the TF values. So now you're probably thinking, great, I'm ready to take data. Not quite, because we still need to tilt the track appropriately. So the way in which we do that is we actually start by leveling the track. So you'll find a little spirit level. You put it on the track, and you look straight down and make sure that the bubble is centered between the lines. If it's not centered, down here you've got a lab jock with a knob. You can use this knob to raise and lower this end of the track. So get your track nice and level, and then you can take off the spirit level. And of course, we don't want a level track. We want a tilted track, an inclined track. And the way in which we do that is look around on your desk. You should see a little block of aluminum. You lift this end of the track put the aluminum on there, set the air track back down on it, and now we've got a tilted track. So that little block takes care of tilting the track for us. So now we're ready to take data. So I'm going to demonstrate this for you. It'll be a little bit noisy, but hopefully you'll be able to understand what I'm saying as I do this. So you will have a computer programming running to measure the TF, the time that the flag blocks the photo gate for. I'm going to show you that next in the video. But just demonstrating what you see here, you'll hold the glider at this end of the track with the blower unit on, and you're going to time how long it takes the glider to go from the initial point to the photo gate. So I'll show you that now. So you turn on your blower, and you hold the glider here, and you get ready. And when you release the glider, you're going to start the stopwatch. And when it looks like the card is centered in the photo gate, that's when you stop the stopwatch. So starting the stopwatch. And when it looks like it's centered, I turn off the stopwatch. And in your lab book, you're going to record this time, which is TD, and TF, which you get off the computer program, and D will, you'll already have at this point. And then once you've got these values with appropriate uncertainties, you're going to then do it all again 20 times. So you get 20 runs in total. So 20 TD values, 20 TF values, just one D value and one distance for the flag here, which is little d. So next, I'm going to show you how to use that computer program. So when you look at the desktop of the lab computers, it looks like this. You want to look around on this side of the screen for a folder that says PhotoGate VIs. So all of the programs we're going to use this semester are housed in this PhotoGate VIs folder. So you can open that up. And the program we're going to use this week is called Gate Timer. There's also one in there called Gate Timer Read Twice. We don't want that. We only want to read the gate once. So open up Gate Timer. And that's short for PhotoGate Timer, by the way. And all this program does is it's going to time how long the PhotoGate is blocked for. 
So to run it, all you need to do is click this little white arrow in the corner. Do not click the one beside it, because that'll cause it to behave not quite the way we want. So you click the one arrow button. As soon as you do that, this little red button here is going to very quickly turn green. You do want to wait until it turns green before you take data, because if you don't, the program tends to get really confused, and sometimes you have to reboot the computer because it freezes. So we don't want that. So you click the white arrow, and you wait until this turns green, and once it's green, you're ready to take data. So the program is now waiting until the photo gate is blocked, and when the photo gate is blocked, it's going to time how long it's blocked for. So at this point, you'd run your experiment, and when the glider's flag goes through the photo gate, it's going to register a time here. So I'm going to wave my fingers through the photo gate just to demonstrate. As soon as I do that, it pops up a time. It tells you how long the photo gate was blocked for. So this is T flag, TF, that you have to write down in your book. Make sure you write down the units for it and also an uncertainty. What's the uncertainty? If you look in the apparatus section of the lab manual for this experiment, it tells you that the photo gate's uncertainty is 1%. So you would write down this value, plus or minus 1%, and put the units on it. Now, as I mentioned, you're actually going to be taking 20 T flag values. So when you're ready to take another data point, all you need to do is click the white arrow again, again wait for this to turn green, and then you're ready to go. As soon as you do the experiment, you'll get a fresh value here. So it's very simple to use.